Welcome to the IT Cast, Real Talk on Sex. Uh, thank you for joining us. My name is Nika Shirell. Our episode tonight is sponsored by the San Francisco AIDS Foundation. During shelter in place, the San Francisco AIDS Foundation is able to provide on-site clinical care for anyone with symptoms of sexually transmitted infections or who might have had exposure to HIV. SFAF is also hosting online social events and activities for our queer and trans family Monday through Friday. You can check out that schedule at facebook.com slash strut, S-T-U-R-T-S-F. Okay, here we go. Hello, some of us. This is super exciting. Um, my name is Nika Shirell, and I am, uh, I'm actually a facilitator for the Some of Us Festival that's coming up in July. I focus on sexual health and wellness. Hello, everyone joining the room. Come on in, come on in. <laughs> I'm so excited to have you all with us. Um, so uh, next month, I will be facilitating uh, or on a panel for sex and wellness that's going to be happening as a part of the Some of Us Virtual Festival. I'm very excited about that. And I'm coming to you live today from Oakland, California, deep in the Bay Area, sending my love. Um, and I wanted to just tell you a little bit about myself before I like dive into the conversation on allyship. So I'm a fine artist and I'm an activist. Um, I own a company that designs and manufactures sex toys. I am a coach. I host a podcast that focuses on ending sexual shame and bringing diversity to this conversation on health and sexuality. So it is so just kismet for me to be here talking with you, the audience for some of us. I love the work that's happening. I love who you are. And when I hear the word ally and I think of some of us, my heart just grows 10 times because there is no deeper ally community that I know of than this one. And we are powerful together. We are powerful, we are strong, we are fierce, and we get things done. So um, so just to acknowledge some of us for who you are and who you are for me, I have so much gratitude. Um, so that's a little bit of my background, and um, I do want to like address uh, address allyship. So I'm queer. I'm a queer black woman. Um, I've been queer since I knew what sex was, which was a long, long time ago. And it's something that I've come to terms with over my life many, many times, having been raised in the Midwest, coming out here to the Bay Area, finding my people. And I am an ally. You know, I am queer, but I'm also a queer ally because being anywhere in the LGBTQ conversation you present a multitude of ways. And a lot of this conversation is going to focus on divisiveness because there is divisiveness even in the smallest of subsets. So hang on, we'll get to that part. And uh, let me just um, let me just acknowledge you for being allies. You know, whatever skin you're in, whatever gender you are, whatever body type you have, allies are beautiful. Allies are the bridge walkers of our times. What being an ally means, being an ally means that I do not understand what you're going through, but I care for you. Being an ally means I will not speak for you, but I will listen every time you are willing to share. Being an ally means I will not try to fix you, but I will stand by your side as you learn to stand. I will, not def I will defend you. I will honor you. I will value your inherent value. I will not judge you. I will not dominate you. I will not dictate you. I will do my best to understand because this movement moves all of us. Thank you for being allies. I wrote that with the concept of divisiveness in mind. Um, and, you know, really 
sorry about that. Um, not just, um, you know, the conversation of uh, race based divisiveness, but all divisiveness, whether it's gender, political, religious, it's all us versus them. Divisiveness is ingrained in our culture. It's in our DNA. Um, whew, um, and given that, you know, like as Americans, when I, when I talk about divisiveness, I'm really talking about all of the areas that come up. Like it happens. So think about it. You know, we live in this democracy, right? And every four years, we're asked to split ourselves in one camp or another and argue our points and our motives and our intentions. And you got to choose. You got to pick a side. It's the same thing every year when it comes to sports engagements. It's like constantly us versus them, male versus female versus other. Like it, it is systemic and it's insidious that it's always about me versus you and not about us being in this together. So that that's what I talk about when I really look at like the divisiveness in our culture. I want to talk for a bit about white whiteness and blackness um and y'all can please ask questions pop in you know say what you want let me know if you've got something that you want me to speak to specifically and also let me know if i'm going too fast <laughs> but whiteness blackness so I started sharing with people a couple years back that these are not ethnicities. These are not races. These are not cultures. These are political choices at best and prescriptions at worst. As a person in dark skin, everywhere I go, people see me as black first. It doesn't matter what is in my DNA, what's in my culture, what's in my background or my history. They see me as a black American and there's nothing wrong with that. But when you look at it as a political choice, it's the same thing with whiteness. There's so much culture, there's so much background, there's so much identity, but when you present and appear white, you get to step outside of the conversation of race. And that doesn't work. It doesn't work because you then get to access, access your privilege and keep people out of the conversation. Sorry, I got to close the window because I forgot there's traffic on the street. <laughs> Other people are out. I am not. Um, but whiteness and blackness as political choices, it's a very powerful thing. And for black people, we've been prescribed our culture and our identity consistently over and over. And the same thing happens for white presenting people of color or people who believe that they're white because that's what they've been told and they're not tapped into their identity, who they are and their inherent value beyond this political construct. So I really want you to sit and examine this divisiveness and what it actually means and what it actually looks like and to be present to and tap into diversity. Um, all right. So I did mention, uh, I mentioned to Madison, who I believe is on here checking us out right now, that I am doing some fundraising and I've got some events that are happening between here and the end of the month. And I want to share those with you before I dive into why we need allyship, because we do need allyship. I got a lot of friends out there. I got a lot of people on all sides of this divide. And a lot of us are scared to play together, but we need allyship hard. So... Right now, my company, Nika Shirelles, um, the one that focuses on the podcast as well as the sex toys, we are hosting an event between now and June 30th that is called Pride in Place. We're hosting social media competitions. We are hosting events. We've got poetry reading. We've got a sexy storytelling event next Sunday. And we also are doing a crowdfunding campaign to bring in the last bit of funds to get 
my black owned business from development into distribution. So you can find that uh, on GoFundMe. You can also find out more about Pride in Place at prideinplace.com. That's pride-in-place.com. And you can also see me perform with Safe House tomorrow, Saturday night. Um, That's going to be live on Zoom and Facebook. And stay tuned. Definitely check out my personal Instagram and the website, NikaSharells.com, to actually just know what we're bringing to you this month. Um, A few details about Pride in Place. Uh, Because the parades aren't happening, and we get it. It's COVID. We need to be safe. We need to be taken care of. Um, We decided we're going to celebrate at home. So I got my beads. I got my windmills up i got just the love and everything splashing out of here because i'm gonna have pride no matter where i sit or stand so that is number one and we've got five competitions where you can decorate your house interior exterior decorate your body decorate your pets make something yummy and please come and join us post and tag at nika shirell pride in place to join that conversation and then we're also doing protest in place because too many People are dying. And every time we get comfortable, every time we sit down, more people die. We can't do that. And I'm not someone who's going to be out on the front lines. I'm grateful for my allies because I see y'all out there sweating and getting it and doing all the things that y'all are doing. And I'm like, yes, yes, because I've been there. I've been shot at. I've run from the police. I've been terrified. I have gunshots going off in my neighborhood. I am too triggered to be out there. But as allies, when I see you taking a stand and giving your heart and giving your love and giving your support, I know that that's all we need to pull this all the way through. No movement made it without allies. It does not happen. The civil rights movement would not have made it without the Latinx movement a hundred years earlier. And that inspired the Asian American civil rights movement that came just on the tails of the civil rights movement. And each group of people has a different level of disenfranchisement and a different level of things that they go through and things they need to heal. But the point is that we need to heal this together. So... I'm going to talk about why we need allyship because this, I really feel like y'all is why y'all came and, um, I'll drop more info on the fundraising and the websites later on. We'll be here for an hour. So please do post your questions. (laughs) Um, so, so, um, we need allyship. This country is so diverse and so beautiful. And the work that we do in bubbles, in places, alone, all by ourselves, it can be so much more powerful when we work together. When we come together and we get that this is something that we have to do as a team, we can make magic happen. And it's so beautiful. I get really upset when I hear people speaking out of ignorance about all lives matter. Cause I get it. You know, it sounds nice. It feels nice, but all of us matter. That's, that's a nice platitude. It's a great platitude, but you have to be present to the insidious nature of counter movements. And if you believe that all lives matter is a movement, you are sorely, sorely mistaken. If All Lives Matter was a movement, they would have been there when lives didn't matter. When the immigrant families were being ripped apart, parents were being deported, children were being imprisoned, the All Lives Matter movement would have been there if All Lives Mattered. When they were destroying sacred Indian burial grounds in the Southwest, they would have been there. There's so many things that would have happened, but that's not what they do. Because that's not a movement and those are not allies. Allies join the movements that are out to fight the fight. They don't counter the conversation. They don't get defensive. They don't argue. They don't debate. Allies take a stand. Allies give their heart, their love, and their listening. 
Allies are powerful, powerful people, and we need allies. Allies are the ones who dismantle the system. That's how it works. Because when I say these things, people say, ooh, hashtag angry black woman. Ooh, hashtag, you know, I can't listen to this because I, I'm offended. It's not me. It was my ancestors. But when allies stand up and say, hey, wait a minute, this isn't right. They're hanging nooses around Lake Merritt on a Wednesday in June of 2020, less than 72 hours ago, nooses hung around the lake that I walk on a regular less than half a mile from my home. And when people don't say anything, when allies don't say anything, that thing perpetuates, it grows, it remains insidious, it remains systemic, and it damages us all. Allies break down the status quo. It's easy to be silent. It's easy to say it wasn't me. I didn't do it. It wasn't my fault. Yeah, holy crap, you Zilla, I know, right? <laughs> I ain't playing with these people no more. I got something. And this is the truth, you know? Like, this is the truth. People don't understand what is still happening. So, this isn't history, this is now. This is not news because this has been happening for the last 700 years. If you think that this is news, you haven't been paying attention and that's okay. I'm, I thank you for paying attention now. So we got to break down the status quo because when people sit in silence and they don't say anything, and they don't say anything, the problem perpetuates, the problem grows. When I don't say anything, when they come for the gay people, when they come for the women, when they come for the Jews, who's going to be there to say something when they come for me? That's what allyship is about. So I stand with all of my people of all backgrounds, of all classes, ethnicities, and races. And when there's something that needs to be addressed, when there's something that needs to be fixed or resolved or just loved on, that is what I do. So that's what an ally does, because that's what we need. You can only change the system from the inside. I can't go to your neighborhood and fix your problem, but I can stand by you while you fix it. And you can stand by me when I fix this. <sighs> Allies are the ones who are willing to say that this is not good enough. I don't know if y'all caught my rant last Monday <laughs> going off about the real ID conversation, these new, this new form of legal papers. I have a passport and they told me I couldn't use my passport because it wasn't a real ID state issued driver's license. And I'm like, I don't drive because I'm scared to drive as a black person in America. But here's my legal passport that I use to travel the world. And after that happened, I realized this is not good enough. Yeah, Obama was president for eight years and we're living in the backlash of that. Yeah, we have had leaders. We have Martin Luther King Day. We have a month in February. Those are great things. But when I say make Juneteenth a national holiday, I mean it. Because people don't know the significance of Juneteenth and they don't pay attention. They're not taught about what black people have gone through in America to build this country. And we're still disenfranchised. And people blame us for our lack of success. That's crazy talk, y'all. That is crazy talk. So I gave a whole spiel from... George Floyd to Emmett Till. Because Till. Emmett Till was the first black murder that was publicized in the news by name. And since then, there have been countless people, named and unnamed, who have died at the hands of this system that was built 
on the system of slavery, on the system of disenfranchisement, and on the system of policing black and brown people in America. The system has to change. We have to dismantle the status quo. We have to say this is not good enough. It's not good enough. I want to tell you right now, allies, we cannot sit down. We can't sit down. Like, <laughs> I said it earlier. I will say it again. Every time we sit, another person dies. Every time we get comfortable or complacent, they need more clickbait. They need another distraction. They need something to keep us unaware of how they're setting the system up such that we follow along. I really want people to hear my voice because I come to you with love, honesty, dignity, respect, and generosity. It breaks my heart to see the clickbait. It breaks my heart to see this stuff on the news. It breaks my heart because I know about it. I will find out and I will hear about it, but the sensationalism of us dying in the streets is not entertainment. It should not be entertainment. These movies that come out full of white gays and white privilege telling us what it was like to be black in the 40s, talking about the help and all these other things, that is not for your entertainment. And that is the most education that people get about black history in the United States. It breaks my heart to think about that. It breaks my heart. So I, I come to you so with so much honesty and love and respect. And I say, when I ask you to stand for this movement, please stand. Please stand and do not sit down. And yes, I'm not going to lie. We need to take a knee. It was a minute ago, but Kaepernick made a damn good point. And if we don't start taking a knee at times when we need to take a knee and standing when we need to stand and standing respectfully, things won't change. But it's time to enact the change. The change happens now. Allies, we take a respectful stand. I'm not going to speak for you. I appreciate y'all not speaking for me, and I appreciate y'all listening and getting it. And if you have any questions, please message me, direct message me, email me, whatever you need to do. I will answer your questions. But, um, yeah, let's talk about, oh, yes. Thank you, Platters. Thank you, allyship. Is that how you spell that word? Thank you. We needed that. <laughs> So, um, I want to talk about, actually, before I dive into part two of this, um, I want to share with y'all some other things that y'all can get y'all yumminess loved up on for Juneteenth. Um, a good friend of mine, uh, S. Kibby on Instagram, she hosts Afro Friday, and she's going to be releasing some videos on YouTube and TikTok tonight around seven. Y'all can see her dropping some profound knowledge about what this is, what it means to come together and be a part of this conversation with unity and love. Please check out her videos. Um, <clears throat> also, check me out tomorrow night on Safe House um, where I'm going to be doing a conversation. Uh, I got a poem and I got some stand-up comedy for y'all because I like to make people laugh. <laughs> Um, and yes, just, just stay tuned. Also, there is a celebration over at Lake Merritt where the nooses were hung down at the pavilion on the Kaiser side happening today for Juneteenth. There's going to be live music. My girl, Cadence Miles. I'm sorry, my human Cadence Miles. I, I don't even mean to misgender. I just had a flashback. Um, uh, they're going to be performing some beautiful, beautiful, beautiful music. And uh, check it out. You know, if you're local here in Oakland or wherever you are, you know, I'm sure there's a way to tune in virtually. See what's happening for Juneteenth. Tell your friends, tell your family, make this a national holiday. Make it a national holiday. Because that is how we actually learn and know the truth. 
So please, you know, spread the word. Um, so I'm going to have a sip of coffee because this next thing that I want to talk to y'all about, we about to get real. <laughs> I'm glad y'all are here. I'm glad y'all are sticking around for it because there's no more time for games. There's no more time for games. I want to talk to you about what is appropriate and inappropriate allyship. Ooh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Zilla. You, Zilla. Can I just say thank you for actually knowing the states that don't even recognize it yet? I was shocked to see that Alaska locally recognizes Juneteenth and Hawaii does not. And I love to hear that Honolulu is trying to make this a holiday because that is so critical. That is, we need that love. We need that love for real. Hawaii and three other states in the Northwest, believe it or not, don't recognize it. And I get it. Their black population is slim. And what's even more important is that as a black person, Growing up in this country, I've had to know everything there is to know about white people. And white people have never had to know anything about me. That immediately disenfranchises us because when we see each other on the street, they don't know me. And it breaks my heart because then I end up having to explain myself. And that is a nasty feeling. So, talking about inappropriate ally behaviors. I have a lot of friends from all different sides of life, all different walks of the line, all different parts of the divide. And I got a lot of love for everybody. I know we're all trying. But one of the things that I have to share, as a black person... On vacation, being asked to explain white privilege to a white person as the only black person in the room is invasive and is gross. And I've done that. That's one of the short ends of the stick. Because one of the things that happens is people want to make themselves feel better. They want to understand more, but they don't listen when people speak. And when they want to listen, they ask questions to make themselves feel better. That's what that conversation was about. I don't understand white privilege. And after two hours of exhausted breath, the person I was talking to had the nerve to say, I still don't get it. And I get that. I get that. It's not really for me to explain to you. I will say that privilege is not mutually exclusive to white people. I have privileges. We all have privileges. First off, if you're standing on American soil, you're privileged. If you're standing on any other form of free soil, you're privileged. I know I'm privileged because I'm born in black skin without a dick in America. My brothers... The black men in my world suffer a whole lot more from the systemic racism than I do because as a college-educated scholar and fine artist, I get respect when I open my mouth and when people see tits. So, hello. Um, so I do have to say that privilege is not exclusive to white people and when we get caught up on white in front of the word privilege, and we make that the big deal, that's a political choice too. Um, let's see. Another thing that has come up amongst myself and many of my diverse friends is this inability to listen to causes without judgment or defensiveness. I have people ask a lot of questions and a lot of people who are like, I don't like, I'm not racist because 
When I say it's systemic, when I say it's ingrained in our institutions and our culture, I mean that. It's not about whether or not you said a bad word or you know people who say bad words. It's not about any of that. To be completely honest, that is such a minute detail of the problem that when you get caught up on that as the problem, you perpetuate the problem. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I said it earlier, but, you know, many of these problems don't exist because racism is heartfelt. They exist because of ignorance and arrogance. And when you are not working to solve the problem, you have to admit you are the problem. And that's okay. If you're listening to me now, if you can hear my words right now, I hope you're waking up because that is the truth to the fullest. There is no aspect of that that I can say isn't a reality for me because I've been in those conversations and I've seen people's minds change and their hearts change and them to get it. Because to be honest, like, I don't believe that everybody is a full-on heartfelt racist, but we are all just a little bit racist. Black people have been trained to hate other black people in this country from the infancy of my ancestors. People the world over have been taught that black is bad, dark is ugly, be afraid of it. And we buy into that system, we buy into that conversation, and we don't step back and just look at and acknowledge, you know, this is petty. Petty. At the very, 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 very least. So put down your arrogance, put down the ignorance, take a minute and listen and just be okay getting that we are not okay. No one in this country should be okay right now. And if we keep pretending we're okay, we're part of the problem. Um, ooh, all right. I am going to drop in just a little more information about the GoFundMe campaign. Um, I designed the Nikita sex toy. It's the first of the Trigger Happy toy line coming out by my own company. Uh, I'm a black sex toy designer, woman, queer business owner, and I am really making strides to improve my life and the lives of the people around me. Um... We just finished setting up our production lines. We're going to be shipping product later this summer, and you can support us on GoFundMe. Um, The title of the campaign is Support a Black Sex Toy, Black Woman-Owned Sex Toy Company. (laughs) And and hit us up. You can still get the pre-order price on the Nikita if you go to our Square store. Um, Once you fill out all the info, it knocks 40% off the top, and we will be shipping those this summer. They're made here in the United States, medical grade silicone handled dildo with a bullet vibrator super fun tell all your friends and and just yeah like it is the symbol of this movement this is born out of my fine art it's born out of my passion and oh so sorry the website is triggerhappytoy.com um, easy to spell, triggerhappytoy.com. You can see all the information there. Um, check out our Square store. You can support the movement at GoFundMe um, and, and just look for the Nikita sex toy. You can also subscribe to us on YouTube. You can follow my channel, listen to the podcast, stay a part of this conversation, and just keep the movement going. Um, sip my coffee. And I got to say, thank thank you. Thank you, Jess. Thank you, everybody, for all the love. You know, like, y'all are my people. Y'all are my people. Um, so let's see. Let's see. We, uh, we were talking about the ignorance and the arrogance uh, versus heartfelt racism. 
And, you know, I really hope that y'all get that because I got a lot of people who are like, you know, my family doesn't understand when I tell them that what they said is racist, that it's racist. And I'm like, I get it because nobody wants to be called out. Everybody's scared and nobody wants to have the finger pointed at them, but they don't get that even if it's not overtly racist, the ignorance is dangerous. I love you too, Madison. I love you, Tiffany. Oh my God. All right, y'all. <laughs> I'm having so much fun with this too. I'm having so much fun. Um, so one of the things I mentioned earlier is true allies only want to help. That is so critical. True allies want to help this conversation move forward. So looking at the opportunity of what true allyship means, I really want you to look at making Juneteenth a national holiday. Whether you are lobbying for it, whether you are standing for it, telling other people about it, educating your children, whatever you do, make Juneteenth a national holiday. Bring forth equal education rights. One of my best friends, we were talking just the other day about how, you know, for me, equal education is making sure that students in schools with zero black people in the student body still have to learn about the contributions that black people have historically made to this country and are taught to not judge people out of ignorance. My best friend was talking to me and she's like, you know, there's another side of this too. Schools in black and lower income communities and communities of color all of their educational materials are to be approved by upper class and white societies first. And I realized I was like, oh, my God, yes. I went to the Kansas City, Missouri public school system. And they told me growing up the entire time that just across, just across the state line in Kansas, in the, in, a, in, in the public school system, they were reading from textbooks that were 10 years newer than mine. In the 90s, I studied textbooks from the 80s. By the end of the 90s, I didn't even know how to type. But my counterparts in upper class neighborhoods were being taught from the new millennium. They all had computers. They weren't all white. They just had class privilege. And we get stuck on this race divide because we think it's a race issue, but it's not. It is a class divide disguised as a race problem because the class divisions are based on genetic factors. That is part of the problem. So... When that hit me, I'm like, oh, my God, you know, not only do they not have to know about us, but we also aren't being taught to the same. We don't have the same opportunities. I started defining luck as when preparation meets opportunity and people think, oh, you get lucky in life. No, you get prepared. And then you get opportunities. But if we are not preparing everyone to seize the opportunities that are out there when they cross their path, once they exist, we are not actually making opportunities for everybody. Just because it exists does not mean you have access to it. No matter who you are, no matter where you stand, the first step is knowledge. So take a stand to improve the knowledge systems of this country. Let's do something better, y'all. Let's do something better. Yes, thank you for the love. Thank you. Who? Hmm. Mm -mm. I did, uh, you know, mention that this has to be not only black studies. This has to be integral studies. This has to be Latinx studies, Native American studies. When I was in college... You know, this started way before college. Let me go back to high school. <laughs> First off, 
I didn't have an African-American studies course until I got to high school as a part of school, as a part of extracurriculars. Yeah, I grew up in a very black part of a very black town, so I knew my history. However, when it came to really understanding. Give me a minute, y'all. When it came to really understanding black experiences through the school system, in high school, in a predominantly black school system, we were required to only have one quarter of a year, one quarter of African-American studies out of a four-year curriculum. That means we spent two and a half months studying our people. And we weren't being taught by our people, which was even more heartbreaking because I got to listen to an African man that I loved and respected up until the moment that he tried to teach us about African-American history, that he was not one of us. (laughs) That even though he stood at the front of my classroom in an all black school and he lived in the United States of America in the state of Kansas for 15 years that he was not one of us. That broke my heart. I understand where he was coming from because his people didn't go through slavery. He didn't know what that felt like. He did know what it meant to be treated like a black person in America because his defense is I'm not one of them. When he was defending himself against the white people who were threatening him in his neighborhood because whether he wants to admit it or not, he is one of us. We are all some of us. And we're in this together. That was high school. When I got to college, I went to a private fine arts college here in the Bay Area, one of the most well-known in the nation, on full scholarship, love my school. When I got there, because they're an institution, they don't have to offer this at all. But they also offered 25%. I'm sorry, not even. They offered one day of art history on black and brown people in our art history class. And in that class, they said, oh, we're going to cover Native American art and African art in the same lesson because it's folk art. And there are similarities, even though these people are from two different sides of the planet. So in one three-hour session, we rapid fired through all of the black and brown people that they could muster to tell us about. <clears throat> and that was what I got in college. I'm a historian. I'm a scholar. I know my history. I know the facts. So I got this education wherever I could. But I'm telling you right now, it's not out there. It's not in the systems. And I understand when people who present white are like, I don't understand why black people got problems. I'm afraid of them. I get it. Because they haven't been taught about the love that's in our heart. They haven't been taught about the things that we did to build this country, the things that we do. What we have brought, the fact that a lot of people would not have made it through the 16. 17, 18, and 1900s without being able to suck on the tits of a black wet nurse. 
a lot of people would have died. They don't talk about that. And it takes love to nurse the child of your enemy. Even when you don't know they're your enemy. <sighs> um, this is why we have to teach our children. We have to teach our families, not just black children and black families, but all children and all families. This is why we have to let people know. We have to take a stand and we have to be honest about what's going on. Um, you also have to take a stand for your own cultural differences. I don't care how you present, what it looks like. Educate others who have not woken up to this system so that they can wake up everyone else. We have to be willing to own who we are in our diversity and spread the word and spread the love and let people know. I don't care if you present white. I don't care if you present black. I don't care if you present Asian, Latinx, African. I don't care what your presentation or prescription is. Know who you are and know what you stand for. Because that's all that matters. That is all that matters. Um, I got one more share that I want to deliver to y'all. As I don't tell this story very often, but it goes into that idea of privilege. And the pain that we deal with in the United States. <sighs> And it actually speaks exactly to my privilege being a woman in this country. And I really know that y'all who hear it, some of us will really get this. I didn't know what black men in America went through just being in their skin until about two years ago. I do personal and professional business development work in San Francisco in the financial I do this work in the financial district. And it's important that we show up, we show up on time, and we look nice. I had just gotten into my butch flavor because I love to dress like a man, y'all. I mean, it feels good in my skin. I like it. And I was late. I was going to be late for my meeting. I stood in the in the. Safeway line too long, and I needed to make it around the block in less than five minutes, okay? So I stepped out of the Safeway. I'm dressed to the nines. I got my wingtips on. I check my clock, check my watch, and I'm like, okay, it's time for me to go. So I start jogging. You know, I pick up the pace. About 15 feet ahead of me in the distance is this white woman. Yes, black males have male privilege. My point is everybody has privilege. Womb care woman, love you. That's the only point I'm making because I'm tired of people being like, I don't have white privilege, I don't have money. Everybody has privilege, so we can own that. There was this woman and she was jogging, she was walking, she was walking about 15 feet ahead of me. And when I started running, she started running. And I was like, that's weird, but I'm late. So I pick up the pace. And when I started running faster, she started running faster. And then she turned where I needed to turn. And so I turned where I needed to turn. And she's running and she's looking over her shoulder and she's running and she's looking over her shoulder. And I was like, I don't have time for this. I'm going to be late to my meeting. So I closed the gap. And when I get right behind her, I said, excuse me. And she stopped and she <gasps> moved to the side and I ran past her. And the second that I passed her, she stopped running. And my heart shattered. Because I knew that she thought at a distance I was a man. And she knew that she thought at a distance when I started running I was chasing her. And she was white presenting and white skin. 
in the financial district of San Francisco, she's been taught, be afraid. <laughs> be afraid of everything. Because we're a threat. I shook it off. I made it to my meeting on time, out of breath. And I didn't burst into tears because as a black person in black skin, I'm used to being judged and criticized. I'm used to that. But it did break my heart. It broke my spirit. It broke my soul. And I knew that I had privilege that day. And I saw some of the privileges other people don't have. So anytime someone says I don't have privilege, I'm going to tell them bull shit. We all have privileges. And if you think you don't, you're not paying attention. And if you think you don't, you're ignorant. And if you think you don't, and you are not living in a third world country with your stomach touching your spinal column, then you really aren't paying attention. If you're breathing American air on American soil, you are privileged. Oh, all right, y'all. I know I went there. And I want to thank everybody who chimed in just to make sure that those points were clear. Because it ain't about what we ain't got. <laughs> it's about what we do. And the truth is that we have privilege. We have allies. And we have each other. That's the real. Um, so I believe I've said it, but I'm going to say it again. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate y'all listening and, and getting it and being there with it. Um, this is systemic. It's ingrained. It's time to disenfranchise the system. Bring it to a halt. Bring it down. Stop it. We can't keep doing this anymore. We can't. I want y'all to know you can contribute to this movement and all the other things that I'm creating uh, via PayPal. PayPal.me slash pride in place. You can also do it via Venmo at Pride in Place. You can find my GoFundMe. We just had an article come out in Cosmo last Tuesday. Um, contribute. Come to our events. We have a poetry event that's going to support the People's Breakfast happening next Saturday, the 27th at 7 p.m. via Zoom. We're also having an event, My First Sex Toy, Sexy Naughty Storytelling. That's going to be next Sunday at 7 p.m., really celebrating and honoring the Pride Weekend. Um, we're going to be raising funds during that event. We would love to contribute and support our artists. We would love to contribute and support um, the Black-owned businesses out there that stand with us. Uh, and also... Post on social media. I want to see y'all shining, okay? Like, let's pride and place together. Let's protest and place together. Show me your rainbow. Show me your flags. Show me your makeup. Show me your pets. I don't care if you got a bi flag, trans flag, kink flag, wave your flag, wave your freak flag. Let's do it. <laughs> it's time to get this party started. Um, I will be speaking tomorrow night via Safe House. Uh, you can also contribute uh, to the artists there as well. Um, my girl S. Kibby is going to be on tonight via YouTube and TikTok um, for Afro Friday, doing her thing, letting everybody know what's up after 7 p.m. And, you know, I have a lot of gratitude. I have so much gratitude. We have to we have to fix this system. We have to. Uh, follow me on Instagram at Nika Shirell. You can also follow the Nikita Sex Toy at the Nikita Sex Toy or the Trigger Happy Toy brand. You can find us on Facebook. Subscribe to my YouTube channel to get all the archives. Yes, the info for the events. We're putting it together. We are accepting donations via Eventbrite right now. So if you go to Eventbrite and look up Pride in Place, or if you go to prideinplace.com, you can see the list of events. 
Um, you can also uh, check out our event calendar on Nika Shirelles. And I'll be posting on Instagram all of the events and how you can register um, over the next week. We're going to be doing this through the 30th. Um, and there will be an art auction. Like, we're we getting that together. We've had a few donations. So all my artist folk out there, if you want to put something in this auction and get the movement going and get the conversation and keep it going and keep it going, hit me up. Tag me, share, post. Let's talk about it. I'm so excited. I'm so excited for everything that's happening. Um, yeah, it's time. It's time to end this. I've shared with y'all a couple of nuggets on what I'm planning to set my sights on and where we're going via Nika Shirelles. This is a movement. It started as a movement for better sex. And really, it's a movement for better living. That's all this is. So join, order your Nikita, the symbol of the movement, stand with us, pray with us, laugh with us, cry with us. It's okay, we're not okay, but we're going to be okay if we do it together. And we're going to stay okay if we do it together. <laughs> uh, does anybody have any other questions? Um, anything y'all want me to repeat so that y'all can find it and contribute? online or anywhere um just thank you for typing the website in earlier um thank you everybody for your love thank you thank you um yeah uh this will be on igtv and follow me on instagram because the movement is just getting started y'all like people are listening we've been speaking for a minute and and it's time to keep it going time to keep it going here i'm gonna type uh the website into the chat box here real quick for y'all oh happy juneteenth yes <laughs> and for the record one of the things i want y'all to know is that everybody everybody is welcome to celebrate juneteenth it is not a black holiday it is an american holiday it should be a national holiday and we all deserve respect because slaves were not just black people. Slaves were native, Latinx, <laughs> South American. Slaves came from everywhere. Disenfranchisement is disenfranchisement. So I love, love, love the fact that Honolulu was coming on board with this because the Polynesians, the Pacific Islanders, everybody, y'all are included in this too. America was not discovered. People have always been here. So let's not be ignorant to what's up. Let's stop telling the lies. History is told from the viewpoint of the victor. And it's time to shift the paradigm. We don't care who won. We know that story. Now it's time for us to be in this together. Completely together. Um, what else can I post for y'all? I don't even know, y'all. What y'all want me to say? <laughs> all the love, all the love. <laughs> um, let's fix the system. And uh, definitely find it on GoFundMe. Support a black uh, woman-owned sex toy company. The product is the Nikita. Thank you, everybody, for being here. I, mwah, I got less than two minutes remaining. And I think this has been a really good live chat. If y'all got any questions, hit them up right now. Uh, otherwise, enjoy your Juneteenth. I want you to smoke something, drink something, listen to something, shake to something. Whatever you do to enjoy yourself, enjoy your Juneteenth. This day is for everybody. Freedom Day. Jubilee Day. Let's party. Let's celebrate. Let's love each other. And if you see anybody out there acting ignorant, put them in their place. Know how to play your cards like an ally. It's not about poor me. It's about look at how cool I am. This is my inherent value. It's not about what you say. You cannot prescribe to me what I am worth. All right. I love you, some of us. 
Thank you for letting me be here with you. You can see me next month on the virtual festival. And you can always tune into my channels, Nika Sherelle, on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, the It Cast, uh, the Nikita Sex Toy, TriggerHappyToy.com. 